I don't know of anybody doing what we're doing here today anywhere. My name's Brad Bateman, fourth generation dairy farmer. So this particular area here where we live is called Mesita. It wouldn't even show up on the map. We're about an hour, a little over an hour south of Salt Lake. We're here on close to 5,000 acres. We farm about 3,200 acres. Corn, alfalfa, we love it out here. You can see the views are beautiful, the lake is beautiful. It's a great place. Cows love it here. We're milking a little over 7,000 cows three times a day. We raise our calves here, uh, heifers. We have a feedlot, we finish cattle also. That's what we do here. We're here at Bateman's Farm, the largest dairy in Utah, and standing within a tower that is producing 6,000 pounds of fresh feed every day for the cows, and it does it 100% autonomously. From seeding to harvest, nobody interacts with it the machine runs in such a way that it, it produces the feed in six days and hence every day this tower is producing 6,000 pounds of feed and so with six towers running here we're at about 36,000 pounds of feed a day. Typically we're running 18 hours a day, um, 365 days a year. We do it on 3% uh, of the water in, of traditional mechanisms and we, we do it uh, 24 by 7 and so the feed is always fresh. So every mouthful that that cow takes is a total balanced diet. It's fresh, it's local, it's sustainable, it's renewable, and it's here every day. What we've got is a, a facility that on a third of an acre produces the same amount of feed as, as roughly 300 acres. And so you can bring then the feed to the farm, which eliminates all the transportation costs, all the greenhouse gas emissions that are associated with those transportation costs. And then if you add in the water usage and, and the efficiency of our power usage, and you start to get a really compelling solution that can be put anywhere in the world. We feel like it's, it is an investment in the future and five, 10 years from now, for sure, 15, th this will be the norm. And you look at people in certain parts of the world that don't have, they, they do not have access to water, to land, or to weather environments that may, may give them the advantage to grow crops Minimal use of water, minimal use of land and resources, chemicals, no fertilizer, no chemicals, all of those things that, that, that are going to lend to a better, cleaner product, better environment, all of those reasons, it's here today.